Hello students, welcome back to our chapter toxicology where today we will be learning back about the topic of toxin and toxicants. We have so far studied about phytotoxin, mycotoxin and zootoxins. In zootoxin, we have studied about nidarian animals that is jellyfish, comb jelly, physelia, Okay, these were few animals which we have studied ab about and their venoms. The next animal which we have studied is bee venom about the stings that is being given by the honeybee as a defensive purpose and how does it affect the predator animal, what are the symptoms of these venom. The next that now we are going to study is the scorpion venom. Scorpions are predatory arcanids of the order Scorpionus. They have eight legs and are easily recognized by the pair of grasping pedipalps. I hope everyone can see these grasping pedipalps. And the narrow segmented tail often carried in characteristic forward curve over the black ending with a venomous stinger. This is the point where it helps inducing the venom into the predator or prey animal. Scorpions spend the daylight hours under cover or in burrows. They emerge as night arises. Basically these animals are ambush predators. They will hide up till the night and slowly and steadily whenever they find any animal or food which is available for them they will hunt those animals and they capture them with their pincers sting it and paralyze those animals and tear them apart with the help of their pedipalps and digest their body fluid in this image you can see how the scorpion is stinging the spider and slowly and steadily the spider is getting immobilized and will get paralyzed because they are carnivorous the larger ones often feed on the smaller ones the majority of species are opportunistic and consume a variety of prey though some may be highly specialized hutentota tamulus the indian red scorpion is said to be the most lethal scorpion species in the world all known scorpion species possesses venom and use it primarily to kill or paralyze the prey so that it can be eaten easily. In general, the venom is fast acting, allowing for effective prey capture and defense against any predator. The venom is a mixture. Basically, it can be a neurotoxin, enzyme inhibitors, etc. Each not only causes a different level of effect, but possibly also targeting a specific animal. Each compound is made and stored in a pair of glandular sac and is released in a quantity regulated by the scorpion itself. In this picture you can see at the tail point, the telson, there is a release of venom from the sting apparatus there is a small spine the spine with help of which it will pierce the body of the animal and will then inject the venom into it our little friend decided to kill me softly with the slow and painful stabbing route like the German in the final battle of saving Private Ryan. Oh, 
the toxin in the venom specifically binds to special canals of excitable cells the venom mainly affects the cardiovascular and pulmonary system eventually leading to pulmonary edema which may cause death scorpion anti venom has little effect in clinical research but application of prazosin reduces the mortality rate to less than 4% scorpion envenomation with high mortality is usually due to either effective autonomic activity or cardiovascular toxic effects or even neuromuscular toxic effects more than 1000 known species of scorpions only 25 have venom that is deadly to humans including leurus quinquisteriatus hontato species centroides species and endrotonus species the first aid for scorpion sting includes strong analgesia either systemic or locally applied that is either they should be paracetamol given to reduce the pain of the sting as well as a cold compress that is an ice uh, bath or a ice bag should be placed on the body of the infected part cases of very high blood pressure are treated with anxiety relieving medications and medications which lower the blood pressure by widening the diameter of blood vessel which will help reduce the pain and the stress on the area of attack anti venom is the specific treatment for scorpion envenomation combined with supportive measures including vasodilators in patient with cardiovascular toxic effects and benzodiazepines when neuromuscular involvement occurs after scorpion venom now we will move towards the snake venom snakes are elongated legless carnivorous reptiles snakes are ectothermic amniote vertebrates covered in overlapping scales it is one of the distinguishing feature of the reptiles that their body has scale over it they are cold blooded and must regulate their body temperature externally talking about snakes snakes are carnivorous in nature and there are several other ways to detect its prey and predator snakes have forked tongue which they flick in different directions to smell their surroundings that lets them know when danger is arriving or whether there is any food nearby or not other than that it has an opening called pit holes in front of their eyes sense the heat given off by warm blooded prey and bones in the lower jaw pick up vibration from rodents and other scurrying animals they bear highly mobile jaw enabling them to swallow prey much larger than their heads so they can eat animal up to 3 times bigger than their head in this image you can see how the quadrate bone helps open the jaw up to 150 degree angle here in this picture also you can see the snake mouth how big and wide it has been opened once in the snake's mouth the prey is held in place the animal the prey animal is held in place by teeth that face inwards and trapping it there and there itself most species are non venomous and those that have venom use it primarily to kill or subdue prey rather than for self defense some 
possess venom potent enough to cause painful injury or death even to humans non venomous snakes either swallow prey alive or kill them by constriction constriction around their lungs or their respiratory system coral snakes venom is deadly to humans cobras vipers and closely related species use venom to immobilize injure or kill their prey the venom is modified saliva delivered through fangs in this picture you can see there is a huge venomous gland present here okay now talking about venom glands i have also told this in the previous lecture that like in human beings we have salivary glands also many other animals have salivary glands but in case of these snakes especially the venomous snakes the salivary glands are modified into venom glands these venom glands are connected to the fangs by a means of duct a tube like structure which will pass the venom produced in the glands to the fangs these fangs help penetrating inside the tissue of the predator animal or the prey animal after piercing it will be able in the transfer the venom into those holes created by these fangs these fangs are very well protected by protective sheath here in this picture you can see how the venom will be delivered from the venom gland by means of a duct to the position of the fangs here in this picture the scientists are trying to extract the venom which is the process is called as milking okay you can see how the venom is the drop of venom is hanging to the tip of the fangs venoms are often prey specific their role in self defense is a secondary function video we have seen how the scientists are trying to extract the venom by compressing or giving pressure on the venom gland and extracting the venom to produce anti venoms and to know the chemical properties of these venoms in this second second video we will be looking on how fast and how vigorous are these venomous snakes and how do they strike and kill their predators <laughs>
part and creating a noise as a sign or symbol of a warning its predator animal so that it should stay away from it there is a third family containing the opisthoglyphus rare fanged snake as well as the majority of other snake species which is called as colubrids boom slangs tree snakes wine snakes mangrove snakes although not all colubrids are venomous venom like all salivary secretion is a pre digestant that initiates the breakdown of food into soluble compounds facilitating proper digestion snake venom are complex mixtures of proteins and peptides consisting of both enzymatic and non enzymatic compounds snake venoms also contain inorganic cations such as sodium calcium potassium magnesium and small amount of zinc iron cobalt manganese and nickel the metals in snake venoms are like catalyst for metal based enzymatic reactions some snake venoms also contain carbohydrates such as glycoproteins lipids and biogenic amines such as histamine serotonin and neurotransmitters such as catecholamines and acetylcholine in addition to positively charged metal ions almost all snake venom contains hyaluronidase an enzyme that ensures rapid diffusion of venom into the host or you can say the predator animal talking about actions of snake venom it can be said that it trains into a broader range in several areas a simplistic approach would group toxin components as neurotoxin neurotoxins produce neuromuscular paralysis flaccid facial muscle paralysis and inability to swallow to paralysis of larger muscle groups and finally to paralysis of respiratory muscles and death by asphyxiation cardiotoxin are those components that are specifically toxic to the heart they bind particularly at few sites of the muscle cells and cause depolarization now what is depolarization the toxin prevents the muscle from contracting these toxin may cause the heart beat to be irregular or even it can cause the heart beat to stop causing death in any particular animal for example of such toxin is cobra snakes the next is hemotoxin hemotoxins cause hemolysis the destruction of rbc or it induces the blood clotting so either it will kill all the red blood cells or it will lead to clotting of the blood for example of these kind of hemotoxic animals these are vipers and also few species of cobra but what are we talking about these coagulants coagulants may have initial pro coagulant action that uses a clotting factor leading to bleeding so when these toxicants enter the body of the animal these toxicants will start the blood to clot now when you have been wounded up and the blood starts flowing oozing out of your body उसके थोड़े टाइम बाद वहाँ पे ब्लड फ्लो बंद हो जाता है ओके सो देर इज़ अ क्लॉटिंग इन दैट एरिया एंड दैट इज़ रिक्वायर्ड सो दैट यू डोंट ऊज आउट और यू डोंट ब्लीड टू मच बट इफ सर्च काइंड ऑफ क्लॉटिंग हैपन्स इन साइड द सिस्टम वेन देर इज़ नो वूड अवेलेबल और देर इज़ नो एक्सटर्नल वूड प्रेजेंट सो दीज स्मॉल क्लॉथ्स विल स्टार्ट ब्लॉकिंग योर वेन्स एंड आर्टरीज एंड सिंपली नॉट अलाउइंग द ब्लड फ्लो टू हैपन प्रॉपरली In addition some venom components may damage the endolithial linings of blood vessel 
सो अंजर अंदर के जो वेसल्स होते हैं वेसल्स के एंडोथीलियल लाइनिंग जो इनर लाइनिंग होते हैं वो उसको डैमेज करते हैं ड्यू टू विच ऑल दीज ब्लड वेसल्स विल रपच्चर एंड इट विल लीड टू वॉट इज कॉल्ड एज हेमोरेज टॉकिंग अबाउट द नेक्स्ट टॉक्सिन दैट इज माओटॉक्सिन इट कैन डायरेक्टली इम्पैक्ट द मसल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन लीडिंग टू पैरालिसिस और द ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ स्केलेटल मसल टिपिकल साइंस इंक्लूड मैसिव स्वेलिंग पेन डिसकलरेशन ब्लिस्टरिंग ब्रूजिंग एंड वूड वीपिंग फाइनली द लास्ट वन इज नेफ्रोटॉक्सिन नेफ्रोटॉक्सिन कॉज डायरेक्ट डैमेज टू किडनी स्ट्रक्चर्स लीडिंग टू ब्लीडिंग डैमेज टू सेवरल पार्ट्स ऑफ नेफ्रॉन्स टिश्यू ऑक्सीजन डिप्रिवेशन एज वेल एज इट कैन ऑल्सो रीनल फेलियर वेन वी टॉक अबाउट स्नेक्स स्नेक्स डू नॉट ऑर्डिनरली प्रे ऑन ह्यूमन्स अनलेंस दे आर स्ट्रैटल्ड और इंजर्ड मोस्ट स्नेक्स प्रिफर टू अवॉइड कॉन्टैक्ट and will not attack humans non fatal bites are also been recorded even though they avoid coming in contact with humans and these non fatal bites from venomous snake may result in the need of amputation of limb or a part particular jis part mein bhi us snake ne bite kiya rahega sometimes uh, if the venom is very strong and it has been a very long been inserted into the body of the animal maybe that part or that organ of the organism has to be removed the treatment for a snake bite is as variable as the bite itself the most common and effective method is through anti venom some anti venom is species specific which we call as monovalent while some are made for use with multi species in mind which are called as polyvalent that's all for today hope you enjoyed learning